media statement about why, in addition to the criminal charges that have already been laid against the African National Congress, a further formal complaint was today also lodged with the public protector. Today, Monday the 18th of October, Comrade MacDonald, Matabe and myself brought a further official complaint with regards to the non-payment of pension fund and other funds by the African National Congress after it had been deducted from the salaries of employees. The media statement read as follows. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media. The last time that we met with regards to this serious matter of the African National Congress having committed acts of fraud, theft and corruption was on the 15th of September 2021. We then addressed the media outside the Johannesburg Central Police Station after we had laid criminal charges against the national office bearers of the ANC and to the African National Congress as an organization. We went, then said that the decision to lay the criminal charges was not at all an easy step for us to take. And it only followed after many months of having raised our concerns internally with the senior management of the African National Congress without any tangible response. We emphasize that we have absolutely no intention whatsoever to bring the ANC into disrepute and that it is actually those senior leaders and managers who committed the crimes who have brought the ANC into disrepute. Today we want to emphasize that again. The action that we have undertaken and which today is further emphasized and supported by lodging this official complaint with the public protector in terms of Section 61A of the Public Protector Act of 1994 is from our side a serious attempt to salvage the ANC from mismanagement. As we have done on the 15th of September, when we laid those criminal charges, we today once again want to draw a clear distinction between political issues and these issues of financial and general maladministration and mismanagement. This, and we cannot emphasize this strongly enough, is pure and simply a labor matter. It is certainly not a factional political issue. Similarly are the acts of intimidation that resulted from our decision to lay the criminal charges against the ANC, such as the dismissal of myself from my position of employment with the African National Congress. It is a straightforward labor matter. Whistleblowing should in fact be encouraged and is protected by the law. To intimidate those who do so, as has happened with myself when I was dismissed for having done exactly that to blow the whistle is in fact a criminal act in itself. I've taken this matter on appeal and my appeal will be heard soon. I have total confidence that reasonability in the African National Congress will ultimately prevail and that this matter will be amicably resolved. When we laid the criminal charges against the ANC, we indicated that we intend to take further complementary steps and that we will also take two further steps in order to bring the matter to the attention of other government institutions. 
The filing of this official complaint with the public protector is the next, in fact, the second step, so to speak, that we have envisaged. A further announcement and the release of documents regarding the third step that we are undertaking will be made this coming Wednesday, the 20th of October, 2021. We do not at this stage want to go further into the content of that step, but suffice to say that it concerns the ANC's financial health as an ongoing concern. We need to emphasize, however, that what we are doing today is in addition, it's not in the place of, it's in addition to the criminal charges that we've already filed with the South African Police Service. The investigations into relation of those criminal charges continue apace and it is dealt with as a priority case by the Hawks. We are monitoring those investigations very closely. As the complainants who have filed the criminal charges, we receive regular updates with regards to the investigating steps that are being undertaken by the investigating officers. And we've already had two meetings with the lead investigating officer in this matter. This is very important because the said criminal case involves high profile persons. As you know, among them, the president of the African National Congress and of the Republic. And it is absolutely critical to always ensure that there will be no favoritism or attempts in any way whatsoever to derail the case. It is of critical importance that at all times the Hawks must carry out their duties without fear or favor. It has been reported to us that a formal letter requesting further detailed information regarding the charges had been delivered in person by the lead investigating officer of the Hawks to the head of HR of the African National Congress and also to the general manager of the ANC, Ms. Phoebe Potter. It is of critical importance that the African National Congress must respond expeditiously and in full to that official request that they have received from the Hawks. Any delays by the African National Congress to furnish the required information will in fact generate a very wrong and negative impression. We will continue to receive regular updates from the Hawks and we will monitor the situation and progress with this criminal investigation regularly and closely. Let us now provide to you more details about why we have filed this additional official complaint with the public protector. Although the ANC, as a political party, is not a government institution, the criminal matter does involve clearly government institutions such as the Financial Services Board, the FSB, and the South African Revenue Services, SAFs, that are in terms of legislation among those, the Unemployment Insurance Act of 63 of 2001, responsible for regulating the Provident Fund, pays you earn, and so forth. It is indeed of very serious concern to us that these institutions have not taken up the matter of the ANC, having made deductions from employee salaries, but not having paid such deductions 
over to the relevant government institutions. Therefore, since it involves government agencies, it falls squarely within the ambit of the public protector. And that is why we have today filed our official complaint for further investigation by the public protector. Thus, in addition to having laid criminal charges about the totally unacceptable criminal acts that have been committed by the ANC senior management over a considerable period of time, it is of very serious concern why the relevant government agencies themselves have not instituted criminal charges against the senior management of the ANC and also the ANC as an organization. We have to ask the disturbing question if these government agencies have decided not to act because those matters involve the African National Congress as the governing party. This serious omission and failure to act makes the relevant government agencies complicit in these crimes. Such willful and prolonged disregard of the law by government institutions falls squarely within the mandate of the public protector to investigate. In addition, we are also requesting of the public protector to investigate whether the African National Congress or the management of the ANC influenced these government agencies not to carry out their legal obligations and thus led to a situation where they failed to act against the ANC. In conclusion, we would like to emphasize once again that all of the steps that we are undertaking are part of our ongoing efforts to ensure that the ANC, as the liberation movement and the governing party that we truly love, will, under all circumstances, uphold the law. That is the end of our media statement. Thank you.